think we'll add, we'll find somebody from the earlier speakers on the role such an academy can play, what it is doing at the moment. As was mentioned, the Amit Sarab's major goal was the scientific and technological empowerment of the rural poor. Mahatma Gandhi said it very clearly that we must bring knowledge and labor together, or brain and brawn together, if we want villages to improve. I want to first of all acknowledge the Tatas for allowing us to use the name Yamshanji Tata. We thought when we were discussing what should the name of the academy, we thought that Yamshanji Tata is a good example of an extraordinary person who has achieved so much in his lifetime. Jamshed Poor stands for him, the steel city. The Indian Institute of Science, he said without science, there could be no progress. Almost like Mahat Jawaharlal Nehru said, it's only science which can take us forward and what Rupert Albert has been standing. From the time we were not sure with the academy how it will progress, it had an ambitious target of at least one male and one female from every village to become an academician. That is how the one million came. <laughs> we have now reached about 2,000 or so. But it's not the numbers that are important. The idea was that we should reach every village we could go. From the beginning, the academy has been helped by a number of people. Tara Gandhi is sitting here. She helped. The very first one was Dr. Ananda Krishnan who was then the Vice Chancellor of Anand University, he selected, and uh, many others have helped us in a number of ways. We are grateful to all of them, because I think Shadi has been, from the beginning, a friend, philosopher, and guide of the Academy. The Academy, when we set it up, we knew the academicians from grassroots areas, uh, they have an enormous power the academy includes in, in, gives them a lot of power in terms of the credibility of their message. For example, uh, whenever we go to a village now where Mr. Sarov has been working, you will find that if I ask a lady who, what are you doing, she will say, I am a plant doctor. I am a plant doctor in the sense controlling pests and diseases. Another one will say, I am a community hunger fighter. Another one will say, I've been a community climate manager. Now we are very happy that another one will say, an academician. That's what we want. We want to build up the self-esteem of the village people, and as self-esteem, particularly of rural women, are very important too. And that one way is make them more knowledgeable. Today, if you go to the village knowledge center, most of them are managed by women. And anybody who wants knowledge will have to go there, get it. I'm very grateful to Betty Albert and Bruce, Al Bruce Albert for the last 25 years, as he said, over 1999. <laughs> He's been coming here, coming back regularly. But what is important is I've also heard him at the U.S. National Academy of Sciences talk about the work of Amazara and of the Academy and so on. They have taken uh, knowledge of our work far and wide. But uh, it's important to ensure that our fellows are helped, fellows are given some backstopping. That's why I had wanted from the beginning, in addition to the academy, I had wanted a knowledge center or a trading center like the one in Trombe, the Trombe uh, School, or the academy, or Atomic Energy School. They have a training center where a lot of important people uh, came from the training school. We will try to do our best to ensure that the fellows are continuously fed with some knowledge, with uh, capacity. The very first convocation was addressed and, uh, by Ranil Vikramasinghe, who was then the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka. He continues to be Prime Minister now also. He is the present Prime Minister. And Dr. Ananda Krishnan helped in selecting the for six or seven fellows. Since then, the academy has grown. I want to thank Nancy and Will and her group 
we actually they were, they were trying their best to ensure. But ultimately, our fellows, they, they take a lot of pride. I am very happy to say it's like almost the academy, the National Academy of Sciences. <laughs> if we take pride that we are a member of the National Academy of Sciences, all these people here take pride that they are fellows of the National Virtual Academy. That pride is there. And that's what we wanted. In fact, the, what I find in the villages is not so much more resources and so on, but the human resource should give its best. The human resource can give its best only if you encourage them to do so. This is why the academy has become important. As I told you, we are now, with the help of Nabad and other bank, Indian Overseas Bank, establishing what we call farm schools in the, fellow, in the fields of that academician. The farm school is one which is called learning, the, the farm to farm, farmer to farmer learning, learning at the grassroots level. You can have lab to land, land to lab and so on. This is land to land, farmer to farmer learning. And how they are learning very well. Kalevani, Rajendran, for example, Tanjavur runs an excellent school where everybody who, want, who wants to know about SRI, system of rice intensification, they can go to her, she is able to explain and so on. So in other words, what we are trying to do is the multiplier effect. You have a certain number of fellows, the fellows in turn help others, thereby there is a multiplier effect. Otherwise in our country, even today I was reading somewhere one of the media about population, unless population stabilized, will have difficulty. But that can come not by forcible methods, but by, by understanding. Uh, Marcus Chikandas, he said, population will stabilize itself if children are born for happiness. If children are born for happiness, not just for existence. And that is the idea of the whole scientific transformation of rural India, scientific and technological transformation of rural India is to ensure there's more knowledge and through knowledge they have happiness. Well, I, we have large, 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 large goals for the academy. The academy is a virtual academy. And uh, since we started this academy, there are other institutions. Ikrasat, for example, tried to start an academy for dryland farmers and so on. It has a multiplier effect. And uh, I want to thank everyone here who have contributed, particularly the various fellows who are here. Uh, because it's, it's up to you. In fact, Dr. Abdul Kalam will find it in the cover, who, who was then the President of India, gave uh, the present version of the convocation. He gave the address. At the end of it, of course, everybody wanted to have a photograph with him he, in the auditorium. He just sat down in the middle of the steps and other people came. But what I want to say is, at the end of it, he asked me, Swaminathan, will you call me for the next convocation? <laughs> I said, normally, Mr. President, well, we invite you for the first convocation. You are, you are the chief guest. But if you are so kind to come to the second convocation. But I must say, he did come. The next one was at Hyderabad, and he kept his word, he came. In other words, the reason why he came for two convocations, some one by one, was because his conviction that this academy is a very important asset to the country. It's an asset to the country in terms of not only asset to the rural people, which I said, but to the rural woman whose self-esteem has enormously got built up. I can't believe it. The emblem village where Dr. Bruce Albert oh, and Mrs. Bruce Albert they opened the first knowledge center. The priest of it, the pujari, it's an, it's an Amman Kovil. The priest is to, was asking him, now can I learn the technology and become an academician? <laughs> <laughs> From the priest to academician, versus going up in his own scale. So it has had a very, what I want to say is, it has had a very good effect in terms of empowerment of rural women and men that the academy grew, and with all the, you'll find many of the academicians who are going to come now. And Nancy has produced his book 
on the academician. In fact, when the very first book of this kind was developed, Dr. Abdul Kalam used to show it everywhere. He said, this is the strength of rural India. This is the strength of rural India. Like Gandhi said, this rural India's strength lies in its knowledge, its experience, in its own, in its own, in its own experience and uh, action based upon true information. Therefore, I feel that the academy should be nurtured very carefully, more and more fellows, if not one million, at least every block of the country, over 5,000 blocks are there, 5,000 to 10,000 fellows, uh, one woman, one male, from, that can be realizable target. It is not a, from 2,000 to 10,000, it is not going to be a very good one, but uh, that's my appeal to Dr. Shalom, to Dr. Nancy, and also you, Mr. Jinnah, finally, you have to have some resource somewhere. I used to say, uh, when you don't have resources, then how do you do it? Uh, in, I, when I was president of the IEC and World Conservation Union, the members used to do all kinds of suggestions. This should be done, that should be done. At the end of it, I will say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have had a good conversation, but to convert the conversation into action, we require resources. The sources, uh, so Nabad <laughs> is a very important source, and I'm sure, I'm glad you have assured them of support. I'm sure it will be spent very wisely. And I hope at the end of it that every one of our fellows will run a school, will uh, what we call a rural knowledge center, because they in turn can have tremendous sense ability to transform India. Uh, you see, we talk about Indian achievement, but the other day, Yupri says, International Food Policy Research Institute says that we have gone down in terms of the hunger index. Our position has worsened. Why is it so? You have a simple answer here. Here, in this, in this campus, there's a garden called uh, bio, Biofortified, Genetic Garden of Biofortified Crops. In other words, that garden gives you information and what are the plants which can overcome, help to overcome vitamin A deficiency? Which are the ones which can overcome iron deficiency and so on? Plants of common origin, you will have to see. Now I hope every fellow here can help to put up a genetic garden of biofortified crops, or those who are in coastal areas, uh, salt resistant plants and so on. So the uh, academy can become uh, a beehive of activity in terms of rural transformation and I wish the academicians, the old, old, old academicians who are here and the new academicians who are going to be inducted just now, I wish them all a very happy career. Happiness comes from helping others and you, you can help the others with your knowledge. Particularly in your own village, there should be no woman who has been left out. Every, everyone must be on board with the latest knowledge. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming.